Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Dust Presents. Today we got Nick Hissom in the house. Yo, what up, Pop Dust? How are you guys doing? So great honor to uh, to have have you with us, man. You just got back from the UK, is that true? Uh, yeah, I'm from London, London, LA. Been living out of a suitcase though recently, so it's been cool. Uh, yeah, it sounds super cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so right now you have you have an upcoming EP, correct? Yes. Is there a title yet? Uh, no title yet. Uh, I've been working with a lot of really cool producers on it. Um, cool artists. I've heard. Is there? Is it true that there's going to be like a Rick Ross feature? Is I it? can't. I can't confirm it. Or okay, you can't confirm. I can't confirm it, but there may there may be a Rick Ross feature. There may be a Bryson Tiller feature. There's what there. Steve Steve Morales. Steve Morales. Yeah, my executive producer. Super producer. Yes. How, yes. how do you get hip, hooked up with people like this? Um. So Steve, I ended up in his studio for a week of sessions about a year and a half ago, and uh, I just never left. We just got on really well and started working on the EP, started putting the album together, and, um, and that's how it all happened. Yeah. That's actually how I got this job. I got into the building, and now I just won't leave. Yeah, you just never, just <laughs> yeah. don't leave. Whatever you're doing, that's, just don't you know, leave. You get a foot in the door, and you know, you're good. And then you say, hey, you, my foot my, my foot got hurt, and I'm going to sue you. Right. And so, yeah, trickery. Right. And uh, that's that's good <laughs> to know. Um, your, your career, though, as... It's very interesting because, you know, as far as I understand it, and correct me when I'm right, um, <laughs> there's, it started off with modeling. Yes, yeah, when I was, uh, when I was 17, um, started off as a model, um, and I, I did some work in New York, I worked for Tommy Hilfiger, I worked for um, a lot of big photographers and brands, which was cool, and then I felt like I needed more creative freedom, more creative expression. So I, uh, I started singing, it's always been a passion of mine. I started writing songs from my dorm room in college. And, um, Wait, hold on, it, University of Pennsylvania? Yeah, yeah. So, did, so you, you, did your, uh, you, you did your you reading, did. so thank you. <laughs> so you think you're better than us, huh? No. That's a hard school to get into. Uh, it, it was tough to get in. Um, I but to, did you just show up and then you wouldn't leave? I so show, just show up and don't leave. I went there for an interview and I was just like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> yeah. Never leave. You went for a tour and then you're like, oh. You just stay. Yeah. Move in. So, um, so yeah, I went to school like two days a week. Uh, I would put all my classes on Tuesday and Thursday. And then the other five days I'd be either flying and working or taking the train in New York and working. And um, pretty much just hustling, you know, for years. And then maybe like five, six years, or through all of college after four years, I started to really get some traction um, to where I was at least no, knew enough people in the music industry to move to LA and uh, start really taking my career seriously after I graduated. So, and, so just, you know, we get a lot of people on here that talk about New York, LA, it's interesting that you had the, the time in Philly and even the UK, but for, for artists out there that are trying to come up, what did LA do for you that wasn't possible in New York? despite all the connections that it seems like you had? Um, honestly, LA for me personally didn't do much. The city where I built my career, my music, was really Miami, New York. Um, the studios in Miami are some of the best in the world. And LA, there's so many people that are artists and that are sort of famous or celebrities. There's yeah. so much saturation. Yeah. So unless you're one of the biggest stars and people are gonna prioritize you over every single other option they have, which they have a lot because it's LA and so many people do it. Yeah. Um, it's really difficult to actually get work out there. At least my experience was. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, it's so competitive, and yeah. everyone there, you know, they you're having breakfast with like I don't know who. I mean, A list stars everywhere. So unless you're at that level where people are going to move other people for you, yeah. Um, it's hard to build in Los Angeles. But um, I was. I built up in Miami, that's like a hype market. There's a lot of music there, a lot of people that are looking to work and get on. Um, you know, Dallas is great, Austin's great, Philly's great, Atlanta's huge. Atlanta's, Atlanta's huge, yeah. Atlanta, Atlanta, I mean, everyone blows up in Atlanta, you know? Then um, a lot of people go from Atlanta to Miami, then Miami to New York, and then finally you get over to LA, you know? It's, it's tough, it's like a whole process. I had a tough time just getting uh, from Brooklyn to work in the morning, so I'm surprised that you're going, some people go Miami, Atlanta. Some people do Atlanta, LA, New York. Yeah. Some people do Toronto, Dallas, to right. Miami, to Atlanta. Sure. There is no formula. There's never for success. Any, no, you just have to do the hard work and hard you, work. You grind oh, it out. Oh, it sucks. 
But you gotta, okay, so if you don't really love it and you're not extremely passionate about whatever work you're doing to where you're obsessed with it, um, don't do it because you have to work so much and for so long and, and very consistently that if you're not liking what you're doing, then you'll never like stay at it long enough. I had not thought about it like that. Dan, I quit. <laughs> I quit, all right? I'm all going right. off with him. We're going to go to Miami. We're going to go to Miami. You know, we're in the studio. We, we can't That's confirm we or deny okay, whether we'll be with. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. It's not your problem. You can't confirm or deny. <laughs> but there will be jet skis. That's for sure. There That's will be jet skis. You can always count on that, you know? And the, the jet ski scene in New York is, like, really kind of Too withering. Jet yeah, ski scene like, in New York is not It's popping. like, you, you even, you even jet ski, bro? And, exactly. and, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I, the beach is awesome, though. Like, living on right. a beach, like Miami, that whole lifestyle. And, and it, like, affects the music. Because Miami is this big melting pot of cultures. And so you have, like, all these influences in the music. Like Cuban, like, all sorts of stuff. Well, you have all of Latin America, and then you have a lot of American uh, people, a lot of people from France and from Europe, and then you have New York guys, Atlanta people, like, it's just, there's so many people in Miami, and it all comes together. People don't give Miami enough credit. No, people really don't give Miami enough credit. I mean, the Hit Factory, which is, you know, the best studio there, like, some of the biggest hits ever have come out of that that place, you know, and do you still think, do. Do you think that's... Is that why they call it the, the hit factory? factory? Yeah, I mean, obviously. oh boy, yeah. I just got hissed. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That that should be. The, you should have a, a show. And actually, did you, you have a show? show? Um, so where you played yourself or something? Um, not like played yourself, like when DJ Kali says, "Don't play yourself." Right, like when, when you, you 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 played yourself you, yeah, on the show. Like a role. Um, it was interesting. I did an interview one time at Fashion Week in New York when I was really young. And I think the footage got included in like a show, it got edited together. So I, I never saw the episode, I don't know about it, but I got an IMDB credit for it. So I'm now an actor, you know, <laughs> go check it out. And, um, and then I would love to do a show or start vlogging and just in general put more things from my day to day up uh, out there on the internet for people to see. Cause there's a lot that goes on uh, behind the scenes in the music industry and in my life that's like, that I want to share with people more, and, and that's like, you know, I think people will connect with, but I haven't been able to quite like. We've got a, a, a get it organized, yeah. Massive following online and stuff, you know. Yeah, it's growing. Like, it's which growing. By the way, yeah, I followed you today. Oh, thank you. So I know you don't follow many people, but <laughs> this would be a real big one for me. Okay. <laughs> My. Okay, what is it? Come it on. is Brent Butler Music. Okay. And don't unfollow me after you leave. This is gonna be okay. a big one. You know, my parents will finally. <laughs> Yeah, because they've been concerned about my ability to um, have human interaction. And I'm this like, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Don't get Butler, though, please. It's, no. it's, it's, it's fatal. That's it's fatal. Butlering no. is a new thing. It not, well, I just got to hiss them, so they, I mean. Right, right. It can happen. Even Stevens. Would you ever do a hiss them diss song to someone? Um, I, I don't think so. I kind of like being supportive of. of, of everyone especially if they're working hard and it's you know it's but what if people say like hiss them go on this them oh well you know? like, yo you're just coming up with <laughs> and, fire and you know, people start saying that just repetitive there's nothing fire. we can do about it repetitive yeah. fire you yeah. should you should rap I with do minds like he yeah, actually oh, does you know, yeah. no way no way okay yeah. well I'm sure you're good I can't wait to check it out that's right. gonna be cool right. we're gonna get up in the in the studio together in right Miami. in Miami but we'll stop in Atlanta all oh. the biggest rap Miami swag money where, dripping where is, oh my yes. god I got a song oh. about Miami yeah. I love Miami actually. yeah yeah no no no, no. we gotta get, we gotta talk about it where does cash sure. money come from right Miami Beach that's oh. Drake oh, Nicki yeah. Minaj Lil Wayne yep. baby for, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that, that yeah, is, huge fans of the show. That has been over the last, I mean, what, 10 years or more, like, that has been the culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, those are the most influential people in the hip hop world. Yeah. And, are, you know, it's really incredible, you know? From 20 years ago all the way up till now, yeah. still the most relevant, you know what I mean? Drake and Nicki. Yeah, and, and right now, and, and even DJ Khaled, you know? And DJ, oh, DJ Khaled, I mean, that, that whole crew is all in Miami. Khaled is there, Ross is there, Bryson makes a lot of his records. Bryson's at the Hit Factory all the time. Nicki has rooms at the Hit Factory all the time. 
She I books need... it out. I can't get a room. <laughs> I, I'm crazy. Go in there. <laughs> Nikki takes over the whole studio. Nikki, <laughs> also a huge fan of the show. Nikki, if you're out there, come on, make yeah. some room for Nick. Please, let me in. Let me in. Otherwise, end. here's some going this some. Oh, so oh, we put you, put you on blast, Nikki. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Um, but, but talking more about about your project. Um, You've got uh, a single out with the video, uh, He Ain't Better, Yes, right? yeah, that's the single. Tell us a bit about that. It looks like you got a little roughed up. Um, so, the song is, I guess, just, yeah, it is, like, you know, about confidence. It's, like, um, you know, I wanted to put something out there that made, like, girls feel special. And you could be, like, yo, like, you know, they're not going to care more. You know, it's not from, like, a confrontational yeah. side. I mean, a little bit, but... It got me a little bit, right? But like, it's more about like you know the heart and the love and like taking care, of, you know, and, and being you know being there. You know, yeah. lyrics. I can be the one that you call at night when the rain falls down. You're lost. So that you know, that's what I want to you know I want to be there, do that. And so. then, and this is now. Now there's a, a, the new single. Yes. Uh, where Where are you? Or, oh, are so. You? So where you are was the yeah. single that I put out in uh, last year in twenty sixteen. Okay, and, is that um, on the Love Energy album? Yeah, yeah. Love so Energy. I had a, I had an EP out uh, called Love Energy. It was a pop project. Um, that's what helped me, you know, really get started when I started getting a lot of buzz off of it, and people were responsive to that message, which was really just like putting a lot of love and passion, and energy into your art, into your project, and giving that to everyone out there. Um, and now the new sound is like kind of more R and B. It's a little edgier, darker, kind of sexier, cooler. Just because I've changed a lot as a person, yeah. And um, I changed a lot as an artist. So the new stuff is just it's more rhythmic, you know. And I wanted to collaborate with a lot of artists in the R and B and hip hop world. Um, and that's where the music comes from. I made it in Miami, yeah. You know, and down in Homestead, uh, in Hialeah, in up at the hip factory, like all over, but I wanted to incorporate that environment, you know, because I yeah. think that was a great vibe, you know. And so where can people hear everything that's out right now? Um, so on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Nick Hissom, H-I-S-S-O-M, and uh, Facebook, YouTube, you know, it's everywhere. It's all the same, uh, all the same username across the board, so. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's doing good on Spotify. I'm really happy like we're, we're getting a lot of streams and people are tuning in and, and I'm really excited about it Yeah, I mean you're up in the in, in what like the seven eight digits on on some of these songs yeah, just yeah. streaming That's awesome. The new single got a million streams. Yeah. We just hit it last week. It's getting like maybe 10 to 30,000 streams a day Woo-hoo. So right now there's probably like a hundred or two hundred people listening to the song right now somewhere in the world hey. it Never stops playing yeah. That's what that's what I thought was cool <laughs> when they told me like you know it never stops playing somewhere, so I'm I'm. Well, you are you are from England, so the the sun England. never sun never sets, sets, sets on the, the hiss- stream yeah. never sets on the hissum right the stream never stops on the hissum em- empire is right something that nobody has said but now now, now you said now, it. you're coming up with so many good things know. you know we got it we. How come you don't have like a hardcore accent? I thought I was expecting something different. So, um, so I grew up in London, <laughs> born and raised in London, and I lived there for 18 years. But my parents are American. I have an American passport as well. And then I, uh, I went to a boarding school when I was 15, and then have since been either at boarding school in Switzerland or in America. So over the last, you know, eight years my accent kind of faded away. But when I was little, I used to have like a really, really British, strong British accent. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, but it, it just it just went away. And I don't know, I wish I had it back. If I go to England, it comes back really yeah. fast. Like really, really, really quick. Why do you think it sounds like most of your, your industry moves are happening in the US? But obviously you have roots in Switzerland, the UK, um, is it just, it's a different scene. No, I just think it's it's because I start I make music here. Yeah. You know, I made some music in London. I went over there. I recorded for two months. I had such a good time because I was living at my home, like my childhood home. Yeah. And I was with my dad and my whole family, and it was it was awesome because I was finally making music yeah. in a place where previously music wasn't really accessible to me in England. You know, it was very um hard to find. I didn't know anyone in the scene or yeah. anything like that. So I met people in America. 
and um, I then went over to London, did some recording, and uh, but it ultimately everything kind of brought me back here, you know. It just worked out that way. But I'm yeah. I'm dying to go back and record in London again. I haven't recorded there for like maybe two years now, um, so it's nice to go back to a place, you know, after growing as an artist, meeting more people, and having a better idea of what you want to do. And then you go back and you can like really immerse yourself in the vibe, reconnect, and you know, and then yeah, experience new things. All right, so people know where where to check you out. What should they expect to happen next? Um, okay, so I'm gonna go on tour in February, uh, 2018, all across the U.S. So come to a show, and uh, it's gonna be mainly a college tour, but we're gonna do radio. Um, we also might have some uh you know tv and, and movie stuff for the song coming up too so everything in 2018 is going to be really exciting in terms of shows and, and radio and, and do you know when the ep will hit also probably like february february awesome. around there february january february you know it's hard people go on vacation for thanksgiving christmas so you have to um you know, you gotta prepare everything for the new year. That's pretty much what we're doing now. Well, you're gonna hit it right in time for Valentine's Day? Yeah, I think we're gonna maybe put out the EP for Valentine's Day. What another great idea! Or even so better, crazy. my birthday is January 30th. Okay. And even better. You know, it, it's, it, yeah, much better marketing-wise, you know. You have a lot of you, really good marketing. I mean, this is, this is Pop Dust Presents, and you haven't brought me any, and my birthday's coming. <laughs> I, brought, I brought a Gatorade. Uh, I'm, I'm being...